Alright folks, so in today's video we are going to take a look at these home stretch uh, lithium-ion 18650 batteries. I did want to say a big thanks to a buddy of mine, uh, KI5FWJ. He sent me these batteries to uh, test them out, so uh, thanks man, I really appreciate it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, is that if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, or share somewhere. It really helps the, uh, the channel out. Um, and I want to say thanks everybody for watching, I really appreciate it. So, that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are at the home website, and it looks like they sell a bunch of batteries and battery-related products like chargers and cases and stuff like that. We're going to take a look and see if they have anything specifically on these home stretch batteries and find out what kind of details we can learn. I'll include links below so you can check this out for yourself. But this battery they're calling their do-it-all battery. It is uh, 2,865 milliamps, uh, which is pretty impressive. But uh, what's really impressive is they can charge at 4.28 amps, which seems crazy to me. But uh, for an 18650, that's pretty high up there. And it appears to be a lithium nickel cobalt battery, which I have no experience with. Let's go ahead and go to the tabletop and see what we can find out. All right, let's take a quick look at the box that these batteries are packed in. Here you can see the Advanced Chemistry INR for Lithium Nickel Rechargeable Battery. It's 18650. Here you see 10.28 watt hours, 2856 milliamp hours, and 31.6 amps. You see the warning label. And on the back there is another warning. Do not heat above 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. Let's take a look at the battery. There's a lot going on here. There's some more data at the top of the battery. Uh, the print on this battery makes some of this a little bit difficult to read. I want to mention that these batteries are not protected with integrated circuit protection. So if you use these, you want to make sure you're using them in a device that has some sort of circuit protection. Here it talks about the chemistry of the battery being nickel manganese cobalt I think it was here at the top of the battery you can see the ohm logo stamped in all right the first thing I want to do is I want to test these on a multimeter now these batteries appear to have shipped to me fully charged so I'm just checking the voltage to make sure that we're starting out the test that we're going to do all from the same page we're using a unity a UT 136 B plus multimeter I'll include links below to all of the products that I use to do these tests. We're just going through and they're all around 14, I'm sorry, 4.15 to 4.17, give or take. There's one at 4.18 making me a liar. We're going to use a Lito Kala battery charger. I've got a video on this if you're interested to measure the capacities of this battery. So what we're going to do is we're going to top them off, which it really doesn't need much. And then the charger will fully drain these batteries and then fill them back up. Once it does that, it will allow us to determine the actual capacity or usable capacity of the batteries themselves. I really just want to check and make sure that it uh, is as advertised. We are going to drain and fill these batteries at one amp each. I also want to make sure that I keep an eye on this process from a temperature perspective. I don't want things to get too hot or catch on fire and burn my house down. We'll come back once we're finished. Alright, so now we are done with our battery test. And you can see for battery number one, it took five, hour, five hours and 25 minutes and shown a capacity of 2747. Battery number two is shown a capacity of 2829, five hours and 35 minutes. Battery number three is showing 2703 at five hours and 20 minutes. And then battery number four showing 2717 at five hours and 22 minutes. All of these batteries came in slightly under the advertised capacity rating. That's not a big deal. Sometimes when you do this uh, a couple of times, you'll get different results. So again, I do want to compare this battery to this Nightcore, and you can see that the battery is a little bit shorter. And that's because it doesn't have the integrated circuit protection chip on the bottom of the battery. So again, I would use caution uh, using these batteries and devices unless I was sure 
that that device protect, protected my me and uh, the battery from being overcharged if it's a chargeable device or being over discharged you don't want to have a situation where you have runaway current from this battery now we're going to compare it to this battery from WowTac it came with a flashlight that I got um, the flashlight is the WowTac A7 WowTac was nice enough to send me that flashlight for review and testing purposes notice that the WowTac battery does have integrated circuit protection and I believe the flashlight is protected as well so we're going to go ahead and give it a try but I wouldn't recommend using this battery and this flashlight long term so here we are outside testing out the flashlights and I'm just going to come clean and say that I got some of the footage mixed up and can't remember which one was which battery but there was no discernible difference depending upon which one I used the uh, Umstretch battery was able to easily power and live up to the power or draw requirements expected by the WowTac A7 flashlight so that's pretty good in my opinion because that flashlight does come with a battery that's specially designed for high drain or high current devices the other thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, I'm a vapor and I know that's bad for me so there's no need to tell me that and uh, I started using these batteries in my regulated mod or a protected device and they are fantastic batteries for vaping uh, I would definitely recommend somebody check them out and use them in a manner that's safe now before we do the flashlight test or trial I don't know what you want to call it um, here's a data table that shows how the batteries performed in the capacity test again these numbers will fluctuate with each test but they shouldn't fluctuate significantly and then you can see battery one was 96 percent uh, battery two was 99 percent battery number three was 94 percent and battery number four was 95 percent anyhow I just thought I would include this data table for those that are interested and I think that really wraps it up Again, I want to thank uh, KI5FWJ for sending these uh, batteries to me to test out. I really appreciate it, brother. Um, the other thing is I appreciate everybody watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks, everyone.